we already have a contacts page. The next step is to create an added contact page to be able to see the details of the contact and be able to add it to contact. Before we do anything, if we look at the contacts page, we can see that we have the hard-coded list here, right? And then we have the contact class, the core class, that is defined right on this page, uh, the, the code behind of the page. So that's something we have to fix before we can continue. So um, I know that I've mentioned eventually we're going to have a clean architecture. But for now, for the purpose of learning .mali, we're not going into um, the proper architecture right now. We are going to create a folder right in the same project. And we're going to call it models. <clears throat> so we are going to have our contact class defined inside the models folder. Okay, so I'm going to cut this piece of code here. And then I'm going to create a contact class here inside the models folder. I'm just going to call it contact. All right. So this is going to be a public class. And then actually, I'm just going to replace this with this. And to define this class properly, at least we're going to add another property. There's going to be more properties later. But for now, we're going to have a contact ID. All right. So when that is done, when we come back to our context page, we can still see we have this list card coded here. How do we deal with this? Now, let's look at this way. This is data, right? So I know that we are hard coding the data, but whether we're dealing with the in-memory data storage or we're dealing with a file to store the data and then later we'll retrieve the data from the file, or we're dealing with a database and we retrieve the data from the database into our application, we need to have a central place to encapsulate data operations, meaning insert data, update data, retrieve data, and delete data. Right? We need to have a central place to encapsulate those oper operations. We can't let those logics scatter in our application everywhere. For that, we can use repository. Right? A repository is a central place where those operations are encapsulated. Right? It shields a replication from doing those operations so that when we replace a repository with another one, then we can deal with data from different sources, right? We can have a repository for in memory, we can have a repository for file, and we can have a repository for database, right? For in memories, uh, databases are pretty good for quality assurance, right? To fake some data. Uh, from files, we don't use that often. From databases, very good for enterprise level development. For now, we're going to have a simple static repository. And later, we're going to create proper repositories. Uh, and then we use dependency injection to inject the repository into our application. And to do that, we're just uh, going to create a repository class enter under the models folder. And we are just going to call it uh, contact repository. And this is going to be a static class. This is a repository which serves the purpose of doing all of those data operations within the memory, right? Of course, later when we use clean architecture, we are going to have different repositories to deal with databases, for example. And then we, we're going to use dependency injection to inject those repositories into our uh, application logic layer. But for now, we are going to only have this uh, to deal with in memory. Now it's going to be a static class, and then we are going to have a static list. All right, so uh, let's go back and just uh, basically I'm just going to cut this part. And then we're going to replace this. So we initialize the data with four contacts so that at least we have something to see before we add a contact. All right, so we have this. And of course, we need to have a method for get all of the contacts. So we are going to have a list of uh, contact, right? And then we can have get contacts. And this is just going to give us all of the contacts. And this has to be a static method. 
perhaps we are going to add another one and this is one single contact so we're gonna say get, con get contact by id right and then we're gonna put in contact id and then we are going to say return dash contacts um should use dash well it doesn't matter we don't have to use dash but i'm choosing to use dash in dash in this course i mean not dash and a score so n score contacts and a score contacts and then over here i'm just gonna say first or default we use lambda expression and contact id equals to contact id here this contact is from within this namespace which is this particular contact right so so now we have get contacts we have get contact by id and i think those methods are good enough for now let's go back to our class here we have the contacts so we are just going to use our contact repository inside this class and then we're going to say get contacts and if we run the application again you know, we should have everything that we have seen before now you can see that it complains about a contact inside the contact um, context page it says contact is a ambiguous reference between our own contact and there is actually a contact inside the communication name space so in order to refer to our contact we are going to use something like this i'm going to say using tang contact equals contacts dot my dot models dot contact so this right, tells our code that when we refer to contact inside this file we're referring to our own contact instead of the contact under the communication namespace okay so let's try to run the application again now you can see that all of the contacts are listed in the list view that means our static repository is working for us so now we are ready to go to the next step which is to uh, create the edit contact page currently we do have an edit contact page if we click on it we go to the edit contact page but there's there's nothing in it right we need to view the details information on the contact page first of all right and then we can deal with the update but to, in order to see the contact information on the edit contact page we need to know which one we're looking at right which contact we're looking at or, or basically we're we're saying that we need to know which contact the user clicked on in the contact list page right so uh, to know that we will need to pass information from the contacts page to the edit contact page and how do we do that so if we look at our contacts page when the user clicked on a contact item we are using url based navigation to navigate to the edit contact page and if you have done any uh, web application development or if you just go online you have seen those patterns that uh, in the url we have a question mark and then there's an equal sign and afterwards uh, there's some strings after that um, so that is called uh, a query string right so here because we have the url based navigation in .mi, it actually borrows the same concept so we can pass those information from a page to another page when we use url based navigation in .mi. so let's see how we do that here here we can pass different things not only just strings but for simplicity we're going to learn with strings first right so um, basically here we are just going to say something like you know which page are we going to right and then we can use a question mark and say you know contact id equals to whatever and then on the added contact page we can receive this contact id so in order to do that uh, we are going to let's roll back you can see we were using name of but let's use a uh, string interpolation here right with curly braces and then here we can just say let's let's use id so just for simplicity right id and what is the id uh it's the selected item right? so list contacts 
the selected item and then this selected item is a object but we can cast that into uh, a contact object right so let's do that once we cast it into contact object then we can know the contact ID so here this is the query string parameter and this is the value right we can receive that information on this page which is the add, edit connect page so let's go to edit connect page so this is the code behind of the edit connect page here in the edit connect page in order to receive the parameter value that it passed from the context page uh, we would need to have a property and that property should correspond to that uh, parameter value right? in this case uh, we're receiving a contact id so it's a property and we only need to have a setter so this setter will be triggered when the information is passed over to the edit contact page right so then how do we know that this is the property that should be triggered right this is the setter of the property that should be triggered uh, on the class we can use property and we're gonna say query property right query property and, and the query property has has two parameters the first parameter well let's talk about the second parameter T the second parameter is actually uh, the query ID and what is the query ID it's basically uh, this parameter this the name of this parameter so in, in here it's just called ID which is the second one I'm typing the second one right and what is the first one the first one is the name of the property right? so here we can say name of contact ID so name of the property so basically this query let's stop this right so basically this query property is telling us that whenever we receive the parameter value from the previous page right, which is the context page we will map that parameter value to this property right and this property is right here and then when that happens the setter will be set and the value of that property is within the value right within the value uh, you know in the setter we can call value right? it's, it's within here so now we actually have the the value of the contact ID right inside the setter what should we do here we need to call the contact repository right dot get contact by ID which we just created right and here we have the value that we need to pass in and of course we can use you know, int parse parse that into an integer uh, if the value is inappropriate that means we need to throw exception we should let that ex uh, exception throw because that's a coding error right so we get the contact and then we can store that contact in in a private variable here in this private variable we can define it inside the code behind class and it's, it's going to be of of course a uh, contact and contact uh, that's it so here which contact class are we are we referring to we can use the same remember we are using the same uh, approach that we used last time so we need to specify that we are referring to our own contact class that we define in the models namespace and dot contact and in the setter we basically set the contact so now we have the contact in order to prove that we actually received contact let's go to the front end of the edit contact page and we see a label so let's give this label label a name right and so call it lbl just a name and then once we receive the contact we're going to assign that contact right to the label so that we can actually see it and let's run the application and let's see whether we can see the contact name or not okay so let's click on tom hicks and for whatever reason we're seeing john doe and that's pretty weird i don't know what's happening so let's uh, actually debug let's go to the contact um, first let's go to the contacts page 
right? And let's see whether the selected item is actually uh, correct. Let's actually go back. And then I'm clicking on Tom Hanks. So the selected item, let's check what it is. It's uh, ID zero. Of course, it's ID zero because we didn't actually provide ID. Let's, uh, that's my fault. Let's go back to contact repository. I didn't provide ID, so everything is zero. So that's why it's John Doe, because John Doe is the first item. So let's um, give the ID over here, provide the ID for each one of those uh, items. Of course, we need to change them to one, two, three, four, and let's run the application again. Okay, let's try myself. Let's remove the breakpoint. I think it's gonna work. Okay, so I can see my name. Go back, Tom Hanks. Um, I thought I removed the breakpoint, but anyways, I've typed Tom Hanks, so that's correct. Let's try one more, which is John Doe. So I have John Doe. So everything looks correct. So in this lesson, first we learned about creating a static repository. This is mainly for teaching purpose. Creating a static repository for you is mainly for, let's say you're creating a mockup, right? Or uh, you're faking the repository. So this static repository will provide you with a convenient way, a quick way to mock the data, right? And then later you can use clean architecture, the uh, plugin-based clean architecture to plug in a different repository. So, or you can use the static repository to provide you a f the, f the fake data for testing purpose. Let's say you're in the QA team and then you want to use a different data than the real data, then you can create a simple static repository uh, to provide the data. But anyhow, I don't prefer the static repository. Let, like I said, the static repository is mainly for teaching so that we can quickly have data and we can... Uh, still use the concept of repository to encapsulate all of the data operations within a central place so that we don't have uh, all of the data operations scattered everywhere in our application, right? I wanted it to be encapsulated in a central place. So we learn about this concept, we created a static repository, and then we learn about passing uh, information from one place to another, right? One page to another here, we're passing through the query parameter, right? And then this is the value. And then inside the place where we receive the information, right? We use, we first create a write only, right? A write only or set only property to receive that. And of course the, the type of that should be the type of um, the parameter that is passed in from the other page. And then over here, we use a attribute, okay? and this is the query property attribute. The first parameter is the name of the property, and the second one is the name of the parameter, right? the query string parameter. Right? And then you're going to receive this. And that's everything I want to cover in this video. I'll see you in the next one.